I'm cooking up a turkey breast on the SNS kettle. Although turkey is hard to find during the non-holiday part of the year, I often find myself buying an extra turkey and then cooking it a few months into the year. And that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing today. I'm serving it with some mashed potatoes and grilled asparagus. It's a perfect non-holiday meal. But enough talk, let's get this grill started. For this cook, I'm throwing a layer of unlit briquettes and lighting up a half a chimney. Now this will get me to a nice roasty mode on the kettle of anything between 325 and 375 degrees. Let's lay in some aluminum foil in the indirect side to make cleanup easier. Once our grates are placed in, I'll spray them with a bit of oil, you know, so nothing sticks. Let's close and let it come up to temperature. Bottom vents will be set to half open and the top vents are fully open. Now let's prep our bone-in turkey breasts. Let's flatten it out as best as we can. Now you can certainly brine this the night before for better results, but I'm keeping it simple here. <laughs> Look, it looks like a heart. I love you. Once flattened out, add in some of your favorite poultry seasoning. I'm using a homemade rub that I use for some chicken, but it'll go great on some turkey. If you're interested in making it, check out this recipe in the description box of this video. I'll also link a video on where I made it if you're interested. Now this turkey breast wasn't purchased this way. As I mentioned at the top of the video, I tend to buy an extra turkey during the holidays. And for this video, I ended up removing the wings, legs, thighs, and backbone. Not to worry, I ended up using the rest of this meat in another cook, and I used the backbone in the other parts I removed to make some gravy. Anyways, back to our turkey breast. Once nicely seasoned and coated evenly, let's place in our grill, which should be up to temperature now. Let's place in our turkey breast and place in a temperature probe. Now turkey breast tends out to dry easily, so it's always a good idea to use a temperature probe to monitor temperatures. This way you can remove it once it reaches 160 degrees. Let's cover and start cooking. Once it hits 103, I'm gonna rotate the turkey breast so it cooks more evenly. As you can see, the side nearest the coals is getting a bit more color. Another thing you should notice is I use gloves to rotate the turkey. One thing I always forget to mention is, I wear cotton gloves underneath. This way I don't burn my hands. I just find it easier to actually use my hands to rotate or touch the meat. Let's cover and let's keep cooking. And I think we're done. This cook took a total of two hours to get up to a temperature of 160 degrees. Once the thick part of the turkey breast reaches 160, let's double check with my instant probe. This turkey breast is done, so let's remove. Now, let's not slice into it quite yet. Let's let it rest for about 20 minutes. Now, while it rests, you can prepare a quick few sides. Once rested, let's give it a slice. And give it a quick taste. Now, this is very, very good. Crunchy. Grilled turkey just hits a little different than a roasted turkey in the oven. Let's serve it up with some mashed potatoes and grilled asparagus. One thing to mention is this asparagus I grilled while the turkey was resting. Finally, let's finish plating it by dropping in some homemade gravy. And there we have it, the perfect non-holiday turkey dinner. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but I can enjoy turkey year round. Now, if you don't care for plating your turkey slices with some sides, it's not a problem. Go ahead and slice up your turkey and you serve it up with some awesome sandwiches. Now this is what I ended up doing with the leftovers. Did you enjoy this video? Feel free to give me a like and a subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.